the network on Zinco TV channel 250. Please remember to download both the Barn Burner and Zinco TV apps in their respective app stores on iOS and Android devices. While you download, make sure to rate and leave a comment. Both apps are free. Zinco TV is also available on Google Chrome, Cast, Amazon Fire and Fire Stick TV sticks, Ruko and Ruko sticks, and also on all smart TVs, 2016 and onward. And tonight I have singer, songwriter, performer, I mean, I don't know if he's into modeling, but if he's not, he should be. <laughs> and music runs in his family. And if the priest sounds familiar to you, that is because he's the son of the legendary Maxi Priest. Please welcome to the show, my good friend, Marvin Priest. How you doing, my friend? Hey, how you guys, sis? Well, I'm on. <laughs> I know, been there a long time in the CEO. No, no, I know. It's been years. <laughs> I know. I, I, was, oh, I was thinking today, I couldn't remember where I saw you last in Dominica for the Dominica yeah. Festival. Yes. Dominica, or if it was Calgary Fest. I, I don't remember. I just remember you showed me the picture the other day and uh, it was like come up in the memories. I was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> 2008. That was, yes. that, was, that was Calgary. And I thought it was so funny for my viewers. It's, it's just funny how I'm, I'm a vibes person. And of course, uh, Marvin was on the show this week and I get a pop up of a memory from 2008, us hanging out at Calgary Festival. So yes. it's so good to see you. And it's yes, so great too. to have you on the show. And I can't wait for my viewers to hear about your journey, yes. you know, of how you, I mean, being the son of Maxi Priest yes. is already a foot in the door. Yes. But, <laughs> but we don't know. When I saw you perform the first time, it's like, I'm looking at, I'm looking at you and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's just like a, you're just like him. Yes. All around your performance, your every movement is your father. Wow. You are so much your father. Thank so you. please tell me about your journey before you got involved with being on the road with your father. How it all started? Um, how did it start? Um, it started in London. Um, I was born and raised in London. Um, obviously, I lived in Jamaica for some periods of time. I lived in America some periods. But um, the journey started for me probably 2006, I would say. Wow. Um, yeah, because before I just played soccer, I went to school, you know, with my friends, hung out, good times and all that. But I didn't really take no music really serious. Obviously, my dad would take me on the stage and put me on when I was little. But, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, whatever, whatever. But 2006. But how, young? I'm, how young did you like make your sing? Oh, the, fir the first time I went on the stage, I got a picture of my Instagram. The first time I went on, I was like seven years old. Like oh, seven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I forgot the song I sung, but yeah, I was seven. That was the first time. And then he would, as I said, because he was, um, you know, I lived with him and he'd take me, just take me along on the road. Come, just go on the stage. Go on, go on, go dance, go run up and down, do whatever you want to do, you know? Yeah. So, um, so 2007 come now. And I said, um, I, I done a, a song in London for um, the anti-gun, anti-gun crime, you know? Okay. So me and my friends was like, yeah, let's do a song. And we done a song and, I really, um, I felt it. I was like, I can do this. So, you know, I moved to America, New York, 2006. and said, I'm going to try this city, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, got, I went to New York and then obviously my dad was there as well. So he understood what I wanted to do. I said to him, look, man, I really think I can do this. And he was like, all right, come. And he just took me, 2007, that's when I just went on the road with him and started just doing backing vocals. Just BVs. So, so no, no training at all. It's just in your blood. No, yeah, no none. Person. I haven't had no, no training. Not, not. My dad didn't even train me. He would just tell me. He would just go to me. Yo, you're off. <laughs> come, <laughs> come again. <laughs> come <laughs> again. Like you, you know you what I'm saying? Like him. You just, you just do it just like that. And then to, yeah. I, I, um, it's the harder way to learn, but I feel it's the best way because you get your, your, you're in front of the crowd. You, you have to do the thing, or it's either now or never. You know, so. Um, so there was no, no stage fright where you're concerned, none at all. Uh, no, not really. Because I, no, no I, I never, I don't really get stage fright. Obviously, you get butterflies. I still yeah. get butterflies today. Because if you don't get butterflies, then it's not really for you. But so I, I used to get butterflies, but I'm not really like nervous like that. No, and obviously, yeah. when you have got your dad there, the confidence, you're confident. Kind of what I'm gonna say. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, so that so then um he took me on the road with him. Um and that was a European tour. So we went all over Europe, Germany and Ireland, Paris, all of them places. And as the time's going, I'm learning the trade. So I mean I learn, I'm learning to perform and I'm writing my little songs, my write my little thing and you know what I mean? So then as I'm um as time's going on now, he's saying, All right, now, you know you can go and sing a song now, you know? So yeah. Before I was just BV's nice, like, all right, everyone, quiet. I want to bring my son out to sing a song. You know what I mean? Right. So then I, I, I wrote a song called um, with my brother called Childhood, um, okay. and that was the first song we done, like an R and B song. So that was the first song I done on the on the um, on the show. So I just do the one song and get my little, you know, my little forward, and and that that that, that process went on for about a year. You sound um, so much like him. It's just it blows me away when you're talking. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so that so that process went on for like a year. And um in that time, so between 2006 to 2008, I really got to learn the thing proper, you know what I mean? Like yeah. how to perform, how to project my voice, my breathing, and I, I learned the skill. I would say it took me about two years to really learn it proper. Um yeah. And obviously I had the help of my dad, same time, because he's there in current anytime I anytime I flop and say, yo, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, flop, you know what I mean? Come again, like you know. So um he's so gonna that, back like you're on the stage. <laughs> you understand? Uh, <laughs> so um uh, and yeah, so that went on for a year, and then we went back to um as I was living in New York, we got a call to go on the UB40 tour because oh. um Ali Campbell and the band had split and they needed someone to to sing my someone to sing the songs and help um the new guy through the process, you know. Duncan was yeah. the new guy. So Astro, who's their DJ, he couldn't get to America because yeah. they, he had some charges and some things in London. So they couldn't fly him oh, to America. So, you understand? <laughs> so they just said to me, they're like, you, 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 can you do the DJ thing? And I'm not really a DJ, but I say, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I say, yeah, man, just give me the thing. So, yeah. so, um, so then that was probably the biggest, that's when it really, really started for me because yeah. I got to go on the UB40 tour around the whole of America. So we're on the big buses. So you took the lead? I took the lead. I took Astro's part. Okay. Yeah, the Astro, I'm doing Astro. My dad's doing some of Ali's song and then they got the new guy, Duncan, doing some of the songs and we are mix up the show. You know what I mean? But so that was that was it. I was like, ah, this is it now, you know? So yeah. um that was a massive step for me because uh, again, that was a because I was learning the trade, they was um UB40 was doing the album, same time. You know what I mean? So that was a 24-7 album. So they wanted songs from me, my dad, um, whoever else was on the tour. So I think I got like three songs on that album. I got a song called Slow Down, and then we done a a remix of I Shot the Sheriff, okay. me and my dad, and then um, I featured on one. I featured on another another song as well. So that was the first step into the recording, and you know, so I'm I'm in the mix now. I'm in the mix, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You're the guy. <laughs> yeah, well, not the guy. Not the guy. Just in the mix. But I, as I said, I'm learning. That People are going to see me. Know. You know what I mean? So yeah. um. So then that was when it even stepped up more for me because when, once that happened now, I then became an integral part of my dad's personal show at that time now. So then now I'm a proper member. I do more than one song. I do a few songs. And then I do a song with my dad as well. At the same time, we do some covers. We mix in at the show now, you know what I mean? I'm part yeah, of it. You so were, you, you, Weren't you coming on like opening for, before your dad would come on? I, no, he wouldn't even. He didn't even want me to do that. He said, "No, nah, we're gonna." Because I, I, I would say to him, I, "I'll open the show." He's like, "No, no, no. You are part of the show. You cut, call. I, you know, what I mean, I call you on. You get your segment because at that time he can get a rest. Same time, you just sit down and do two backing vocals. You know what I mean? And then just yeah. easy. Go on, son. Go and do your thing. And it's putting me out there yeah. at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. So that was the. I would say that was the. Um, that was the start of it for me. That was like so that's 2006 to 2007 to eight and i would say from and then from eight to ten that's i was just constantly on the road all around all around the world all around we went around the world maybe three times 
So most of the stuff that you did at that time with your dad, it was all collaborations. There was there any solo uh, material that you were singing? I know you said you played um, that, was it solo? Uh, no, 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 not really. No, they, they, not really. No, I'll be honest, not really. It was more, as I said, it was a learning process because I, I was still even trying to understand how to structure songs, how to put the verse or to put the chorus or it for song. You know what I mean? It's all yeah. like I was, I was, I was, I was recording, but I weren't like putting nothing out for people because I weren't ready. I, yeah. I knew I weren't ready. You know what I mean? Well, I, I saw you perform. And yes, no, no, but I don't know. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually yeah. shocked when I realized when you started. I'm like, no way! Like, yes, when I saw you, I was like, you look like you've been out here for a while. Like, you're just yeah, like, but as I said, because the performing side, yeah. easiest part, we can do that. Give me the song, yeah. I'll sing it. Yeah. You know, and I, and I can perform the song, so I know how to engage with the crowd, make the crowd move, and I, I learned that. As I said, I'm right there with the king, so I so can learn. Yeah. You see what but I'm saying? It was, it was to, for me, watching you perform was more or less like the reason why I say that is because, yes, I knew you were Maxie's son because I've seen you before, but to the people who are watching you, like the girls were screaming and going nuts, like, even though you're Maxie's son and you come out front and sing, most people would be listening, you know? But they Very were going, true. like, that's why I said, were they personal songs you were singing of your own at that time that maybe the crowd had known? Um, no, they were, well, um, no, the song Childhood, there was maybe two that was my own, but but no one would know them because they weren't out. But yeah. then, but as I said to you, because when you learn how to, how to when you learn the performance side, yeah. um, it don't sometimes it doesn't even matter what you're saying. So long as you sound on so long as yeah, you're on key you're and, you're, and, move and you're and you're engaging, you don't yeah. sometimes you don't even have to say nothing. Not a word. Well that's what I mean. I'm telling you, I was watching, I'm watching the girls, I'm like, but well, on, you know, they go nuts for you. They go uh, nuts for you. Yeah, they do. Oh gosh. Watch you getting all shy from me talking to Yeah, God. Well, I'm not getting really shy, but what do you want me to say? Like, ah. <laughs> uh, you, know, you, you know, cover you. We don't want the girls. Oh, to gosh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it was, well, at that time, there's a lot of that. <laughs> uh, you know what the good thing is? Like I said, you know, um, again, you're the son of Maxi Priest, but you hold your own. And that's yes. what the good thing is about it, you know. He puts you out there, but you can hold your own, and you have made those fans on your own from what you're doing as well, you know. Mm. Well, so yeah, well that, that was. I mean, that's the good part. Yes. Well, that was the that was the the next step because the next step was then. All right. Now we've done this. Now we've done this for a few years. What's the next step for Marvin? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, this was 2010, going on 11. Um, we get to um. New Zealand. So we get to on a big show in New Zealand, 30,000 people. Massive, massive show. I, I was say, side, don't move huh? too fast on me. We got an hour, you know, so don't move too fast. Oh, you know, no, 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 no. We got, come on, man. I'm giving I, you, I, I, I'm, I, I I'm giving hear, you news. No, but I want to hear all the little things in between before we get to New Zealand. I'm trying to think what I'm missing out. There, there's not much, because obviously you have to understand in these times, when I'm saying I'm going around the world and we're touring, I'm touring, yeah. we're, we're, we're joining shows with all of the bands, isn't it? So we, yeah. we're with Kamani the Marley band. them. All of you know, because you go to them. So with all yeah. the various artists at the same time, I'm getting to meet them. So I'm meeting Beris, I'm meeting Conscience, I'm meeting my, I met Dennis Brown when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. I used to call me and my brother Hato Pato. You know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah. So yeah. so all of so all of the Freddie McGregor, I know all of his kids, the genius. I know I practically know all of the reggae industry. Like, yeah. do you get what I'm saying? Like, and a lot of the pop industry as well, because my dad covered that side. So as we, as I said, when we're touring round, we're touching all of these places, all of these. So, so some of the shows, my dad might be the only reggae artist on there because he's had billboard success. You know what exactly. I mean? And then, but then also we get to go to places like Africa, Trinidad, um, you know, we go we're to Ethiopia, Zimbabwe. And on these shows now you've got, um, as I said, people like Freddie McGregor, you got some of the legends them on these shows because my dad yeah. covers that section too. You know what I mean? But then we'll go to somewhere like Barbados now 
and um someone the younger younger generation will be there so they'll be like conscience they'll be like you understand it'll be a mixer so so, uh, so it's not it's, yeah, um, I about that, that r&b and the soul and all that i saw you exactly we get to do like as i said because he's done billboard we get to do jazz fest yeah. and all festivals like this that are more mature calm crowd but we still touch that side as well so that, yeah. I, so when i'm saying i'm going around the place we're we're doing we're doing that in all of them sections. So we're doing Japan as well. We'll go to Japan for a month. Yeah. You know what I mean? Billboard and the Ray Ray and all two shows a night. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, um, yeah. your dad's so as still, I said, go on. No, I said for all these years, your dad has stayed steady. Go oh on. man. He don't, it, he, it, it, it only just stopped. It only just stopped because of the virus. I know, <laughs> he, don't know me. <laughs> he does not stop. He missed, you know I, mean? I saw him here last year, I think it was, or last, maybe two years now, Jerk Fest in Toronto. Mm -hmm. That's the last time I saw him. And he doesn't, he hasn't changed. Energy's still up. You know, it's like, right. wow, you know. Yes. So uh, uh, Toronto is one of our favorite places. I've got family there. My mother's side in, is in yeah. Scarborough. Scarborough yeah. and Ajax. Ajax, is that, is that yeah, I've got cousins there. Yeah. Because when, when I was um one of the first, as again, when I went with my dad when I was really young, we got to, I forgot the place, what it's called, but it was a big stage and it's the stage that spins around in a circle. Um, it had a Ontario circle in the place. middle. Where? I think it's Ontario place it was. Yes. That was yeah. one of the first I places we went in Canada. Yes. Yes. And I remember yeah. the stage spinning around. We was on the stage. The kids that you yeah. saw with me. I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think was Shinehead on that show? Yes, that's I right. That's I right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Man, I remember that show. Yeah, yes, they put man. on the shows at that venue. Yes, man. Yeah. It's a long time. I didn't I didn't point you out that time, but I know I was at that show. I remember. That's right. That but I, that's the only thing I can remember that we was in the middle and the, yeah. the stage did spin. You're I'll like, never forget that. Yeah. You're like this is different. Yeah. What is I know you've been everywhere, but what is your favorite w most memorable place that you would say that wow you know i, oh, I really right. enjoyed myself there i i would the most memorable would, would probably be my first new zealand show i would say the first one that we done that when i went with my dad would we be that one that one's on youtube and i walked onto the stage and i couldn't hear myself the place yeah. is where Ah! Oh, I it's on you YouTube. You remembered because you messed up because you couldn't. No, hear sir. It. The people them just scream. I, I could. I, I'm all singing off key. I can't even hear the music. Yeah. Just, until I'm just like looking at the people and they're just going crazy. And I'm sick. Yeah. And so that was probably that experience was. Um, that's my biggest experience. But 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 the best experience for me would have been the UB40 tour. Yeah. Yeah, because that's, as I said, that's when you get to, when you get mixed and mingled with them artists there, yeah, I feel ready. If you're not yeah. ready, yo, you're in trouble. No, <laughs> you're <but> yeah. <laughs> I mean, for you guys, I mean, Maxi and everything, but for you guys to be called in mm. to be a part of that band is a big honor, you know? So yes. like you say, you have to be ready if you're not ready. Yes, yes, <laughs> of know? course. But my, but my dad was friends with them from a long time. Oh, so, yeah, on, so then yeah. it, they, they was like, oh, this is easy. Come in, Max. And he's just yeah. like, yeah, let's go. You know? Yeah. yeah. I actually remember that. And and I was thinking, you know, at first I was thinking, oh, how come Maxi? Because Maxi's a name by himself. Yeah. But when you really look at the background and what you already represents, it's an honor. Mm -hmm. you, like, you were a part of that. You know what yeah, I mean? Everyone thought that he joined the band. They was like, what's going on? He's like, no, 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 no. I, I thought at first <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> No, 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 it weren't like that. Uh. <laughs> but even yourself, like you said, you, you got to, because of your father, you got to perform in so many different places and so many different, mixed up in so many different genres that mm -hmm. even yourself as an artist is in so many genres. Like you don't just stick to one kind of that's genre. That's right. Like Look, but, as I, but as I said, that's because I learned from him because yeah. he's like, he's, he, he say it like this, you're an artist. So imagine you're an artist and you've got a paintbrush now. Why can you not paint your picture on any canvas? I can paint it on the wall. I can paint it on the tree. 
I could paint it on the floor. You understand? If you're an artist with a paintbrush, so my my yeah. voice is my paintbrush. So anything, yeah. anything, any rhythm, I don't have any rhythm. Say on. You know what I'm saying? And and because as as I got on more into development into the industry, that's how I got to go to like universal publishing. Like today, I'm a songwriter. You know what I'm saying? Like like so I write songs for other people because I've had the experience to learn to do these things, you know what I'm saying? It just take, take time and I've learned patience, patience, patience. And now I can write the songs and on anything. It just, that's just wow. how, how it works, yeah. Wow. So who are some of the people that you wrote for? Are you, are you not sure who they take? Oh no, there's, there's a few, there's a few, there's, a, as I said, more, but more might be more in the pop world. So you've got people like um, Brian, um, Brian McFadden from uh, UK band, Boys Own. You've got Ronan Keaton. And these are more of like in the pop world, you get what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And it's it, not, re not really because it's not so much in the reggae side because reggae artists don't want no one to write their songs. Who <laughs> said that? Well, that's what I find. I, 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 I find that. I find that most when I'm in the studio with most of the reggae artists, they don't really want well, nobody to touch them. The problem is, is then they want to give some credit to the other people. Everybody and wants then, some credit. Well, then maybe that's what it is. But I found most, again, most of my, my paid work has been mostly in the pop world with, yeah. with, with writing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, think it's, I think it has to do with, well, some of them, they know it. They know how to do it. But um, a lot of them want the full royalties for what they're doing. That's very but true. I, too, I, really feel, I really feel as an artist, when you're Go creating, on. you can't do everything. This is my opinion. Well, I think it's good when you're in a studio and you have somebody that's given their input, whether it's writing, giving input, if it's one that's going to tell you vocally, whatever you're doing, and then you got the producer. I think that always comes together better when you have other input. That's, that's how opinion. you make the best music. Yeah. That's my uh, it's, it's very rare that you find, excuse me, one person that can do everything. And obviously, if you find them genius, excellent, and you have to give them their respect. But I find... The best music comes when you have a whole team. So you might have a whole band. You might have a one person write. You might, and the singer might not even write one line. But it doesn't matter. It, it's it's yeah. about getting the best, the best out of the sound with the people that are are, are there. I find that it's better when you have got more people involved in it. But like me personally, I don't. I used to make rhythms and stuff. Now I don't really bother with the rhythm thing. I just yeah. get the people them to make the rhythm them, and then me just write the song and sing the song. It's a much easier process for me other than sitting there for hours i did a rhythm and all right oh i need to do this part this part and then get to the song it, it, it's not it doesn't it doesn't work better that way for me mm. so here you're saying you had no vocal training you just go on stage with daddy but you never tell me say you play instruments and all that that come natural uh, uh, well i'm not i'm not, see this is the thing now this is why i said to you i don't do a lot of the production because i can do it but yeah. i'm not i'm not i'm not as good at it as i am at singing the songs and writing the songs so that's why i just do like so i can play the chords them but i'm not going to yeah. say i can sit there and play the whole piano and go on but because I, I got a, um my production system so i can yeah. just do the cards chop chop paste that then i could do the bass Place that, then we can do the drum. Do you, you see what I'm saying? And I can yeah. put them into the session and put them where I want them to be. So I can I can do what I need to do, but I wouldn't say I'm no great musician like that. No, so. <laughs> I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a rating. I'm sure it doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and I know what you mean. Like, it, it is a big difference when you can just go in there and worry about just all one thing. It, it yes. is a lot for one person to do, you know? Yes. You're exactly right about that one. Mm. So when you say, when we're talking about, um, okay, you're talking, you're, we talked about dad, but want to talk about your thing now, what you've been mm -hmm. doing. Did we mm -hmm. talk about own the club? How yeah, but that's that? what we, we was going to, no, we was going to get to that part there. I was coming, uh, that was the next, sec the next section now, because. Because oh, okay. I wanted to talk, like, that one did so well for you. Yes, but that was again. That was the door opener because, um, as I, I was as I was saying before, I got to um to New Zealand, okay. and then the the big show in New Zealand, and then that show carried on to Australia. So we got to tour Australia. So this is two thousand eleven, I would say. So um, two thousand eleven. Now we are tour Australia, and I'm getting wicked reception. 
I'm reception crazy, crazy, crazy. Can't even come off the stage. People are going mad. So um, so I I get to um I meet a lady here, and she says I know some people that can you know that can get you a record deal. I'm like record deal. Ah, whatever. I ain't even got no songs. <laughs> I'm like no treat, man. I've got like four songs, man. Right? You know what I'm saying? She's like um. She's like, no, you're really, really good. They'd be interested. So I'm like, all right. So I go back to America. I'm living in New York. They were kind there. So you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't want to cut you, but it's funny oh. how you say this because you toured everywhere. You yeah. didn't have that song yet. Yeah. And it just shows like, again, okay, you're Maxi Free's son, but you toured yeah. everywhere. Did not have that song. And people are always out there. You need that one hit tune to take you yeah. somewhere. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're already there and you didn't get no tune yet. Mm -mm, no song but but I, again as you said though because of um because of my dad it, people because of my last name they they will they'd be intrigued let me see yeah. let me let me let me hear you then let me hear what I'm going. you know what i mean let me see yeah. what i'm going. so so um yeah so i go back to new york and then she called me and she said yo they want to meet you i said what she said yeah when you coming back to australia i said I don't know, but I'll, <clears throat> but I'll get on the next flight and come. You know what I'm saying? It was in Australia? It was in Australia. I'm in New York. And the call I got was from Australia. Okay. okay. You understand? And they're like, yeah, the people then want to meet you. When are you going to come back? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. Like, I, I ain't got no tours to come back there. And, and, but they're like, all right, hey, what we can do? I'll book you a couple cl club gigs because I can get you in a couple clubs. And then you can get some gigs. You do two gigs and you can come and meet up with these people. You know what I mean? So I'm like, all right, then let's just try it. Because I'm, I'm one that will always say, it don't matter where your thing, where you, where you get your thing in the world. If you have to go and get it, go and get it. It don't matter yeah. where it is. Yeah. Some people get frightened and they're like, no, some can't leave home. I can't, I can't leave this. Yeah. I can't. But sometimes you might have to go to go and pick yeah. up what you need to pick up. You understand? Yeah. So, so, um, so when you went back there in, in the clubs, what song did you sing? You say you never have no tune yet. No, but as I said, no, but here's what I can do. I said I got four songs, <laughs> and then I got cover songs. We can't, oh, we can do. I could do UB40. I can do a Berries. I can do a Dennis Brown. I can do a Maxi Priest. I okay. could. You understand? So I yeah. can, I can, I can tune in. We can. No, yeah, come on. No, watch me. I'm, I'm just making jokes again back to the thing how you are <laughs> in the tunes, not even then. They <laughs> That's why I'm saying that. <laughs> All right. So then, um, so then what happened next now? Yeah. So I say yes. So I come back to Australia now and um, I do a couple, I do uh, one of the gigs then and I get the meeting with the um, A&R from Universal Records now. You know, because the girl, she she knew them from, she knew someone that knew someone and they, you know, looked them up because them time they it was running it. Facebook and MySpace, I think. I think okay. MySpace was dying down, but it was more Facebook. Yeah. Right. And, and I had, I didn't realize, but I had like 5,000 people on my Facebook. Rama. Because people have just been adding them as time's gone on, they're just adding and adding. Yeah. So he's come, I've, I've gone to meet him now and he said, yeah, um, you know, I heard about you. We saw your performances. We they went to actually because we was touring the whole of Australia. He said that they saw I saw me in one place, and then booked the tickets to two more places to come to see, to see the reaction. It was as I said, it was more about the reaction. They were yeah. more looking from the label's perspective. They more were like, ah, oh, the people are reacting to you. You understand? You got a vibe, yeah. and your dad and rare, rare, rare. So yeah. Uh, um. So then, yeah, I cut a deal with them. I, 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 not on that first trip, but he said, yeah, come back. We'll sort out some work visa thing and some rare, 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 and we're going to sign you. So I went back to New York. I was there for about maybe two, three months. And then I, and then I went back to Australia and signed the deal. Signed with Universal, um, uh with the label and, and um that was a single i think a few singles before i got an album deal that was just for a couple singles so um so yeah so then i'm there now so in, in australia i know you have the deal and you know you got the deal and you feel you feel good because you think you've reached to, to yeah. that you reach no that's <laughs> like all right what's the thing so here where the thing gets sticky now <laughs> watch this no 
So, um, <laughs> you know, because this is what happens because you um, I come in as reggae R and B. That's how I come in. Yeah. Right? And I'm going in there. Yeah, man. Had the had a reggae man, and you know. So, go to the studio now. They want to switch it up for you. No reggae. I knew it. Mm -mm -mm. There's none of this, none of that. There's none of that. So they they're sending. You. They so, want to hold you how they want you to. Oh know. gosh. So I'm going to the studio and I'm struggling at first. I didn't know because I'm like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want this rhythm. I want this. I want to do this, 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 until you end up becoming a problem. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm so glad you're talking about this because a lot of people uh, out there, my viewers, you don't understand when a label label comes involved, they have a vision for you as the artist, and you as the artist within yourself have you a vision. Don't. Yourself, <laughs> yeah. but, right? but in saying that, that's what I will say this though. This is why to cut the story today, yeah. this is why it's better for artists today, because you can you can build your thing as you with all of the, all of the uh, music that you want to do and what you feel inside yourself and then go out there. Do you understand? Yeah. And then, yeah. then go and see if they want to be interested other than you're running it down now. Now you can do most of it yourself with the, with yeah. the equipment today. But anyway, so, so that's what's that. So I've gone now to this, as I said, to the studio. It's not like they're, they're not cursing me out or nothing. They're not angry no, with no. me. No. Nobody know I diss me, but none of my music ain't coming out. Nothing. And no. I'm on the list. Till I was on the I was on the label for a whole year, one year. No, but oh, hold on a second. When you say that the music's coming out, did you mean physically coming out, or you're not? I mean, I'm, I'm sending the I'm mm -mm, mid our studio. I'm in the studio. I'm sending my A and R the songs that I'm doing. Send, no, send, no, no. Not send, no, right. send. And this is going on and on until I start not wanting to send anymore because I'm like, what's going on? And then, then after a while, they start saying to you, well, you need a song that sound like this. You need a song with song like this. Look at I this. That that is, and that is, is Marvin Priest. Watch this, watch this. And then they go, look what's playing. Look, this is number one on the radio. This is number one here. This is the number, you understand? Yeah. So then now, you're playing a numbers game. So you're playing with, in a different field now. It's not really about what you feel personally, like what you what you want for players. It's not about that. It's now what the business is saying they need to do to make the business go forward. And if you want to go forward, you have to work with the business. Yes. You understand? Yeah. So, but um, but not on. to cut you, even though I understand as an artist what you're saying, but mm -hmm. Did you not feel anything they were recording suited you because you were so versatile? Was there anything you were feeling in that? Uh, no, no, it wasn't that I weren't feeling. It was just like, as a, a new artist, you want to project something, isn't it? You want to project yeah. with, you want to project what you want to project. You want to project what's in here and what's here. So exactly. if anyone, anyone else is telling you, say, oh, you need, you need to, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's not what you really want to hear. It's not what you want yeah. to hear. You just yeah. want to hear, yeah, man, let the tune, go on. Like, that's what you want to hear. <laughs> like, yeah. You understand? So um, yeah. so as, as time gone on, as me said, my dead dead now, and a year's gone now, isn't it? So you signed for a year. No song ain't come out. No video. The food with them gear soon start done out. Like what? Like what? What? You understand? The whole, time, the whole time, what I don't understand is I see what you're saying. You did a song, you send it on. They're saying no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Where is it that the person who was doing the song with you was mm -hmm. not giving them that right thing they needed? Why did it? No, no. It's not that they weren't giving. Remember, these people are put in place by the label, so the label sending you to the producers that are making. They're making the hit songs, they are. But remember, I am me. So I'm not doing, I'm not Chris, I'm not gonna, they're sending me the song, all right, imagine, this is the time, right? So you're talking 2011 now. So you're talking Trey songs, Chris Brown. Yeah, I talk, yeah, I talk them boy, you understand? Not them boy, them men. We're talking, but that's the flavor of yeah. what I want at that yeah. moment. K.O. Cruz and then. One and two, so. Yeah, but Marvin Priest's sound wasn't playing on the radio. I didn't have a sound. My sound was just what I, my sound was me. And they weren't, yeah. they didn't, it wasn't fitting 
Because at that time, let's be honest, I was more straight reggae. Because that, that's what I'm doing. I mean, I come in my reggae thing. And it's yeah. like, yeah, you have to kind of shape it. Because even my dad hadn't explained that to me. Because if you remember my my father's big song, Close to You, is yeah. more R&B yep. pop with reggae pieces, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm still not understanding that part yet. I'm still thinking McCambay now and just, you know, I'm wine and, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so they're putting me in with the right people. But I'm still giving too much. I'm, you know, it's it's still yeah. not it's still not the thing. Yeah. Um, and maybe I'm I'm I might be seeing it wrong, and maybe that maybe I was still learning. But to me, I was feeling I felt that I was sending decent enough songs. You understand? Yeah. So, no, um, I, I know what you're saying, and I think you are being true to who you are. I personally yeah. heard this so many times, and I think a label tries to change an artist. They they, they can, but, but, but as I said. Different. If you are if you are in the position, if you're in the position today of power, meaning if you're in the position today with your product and material and the people them are liking it, then it's a different story for you as an artist in a yeah. label. But if you're just going to a label as an act, hey, sign me, hey, yeah, we'll yeah. sign you, then they're gonna try to, you know, yeah. put you in the way. But but the point what? is when they came from the whole thing, when they came from the beginning, they came to you, they saw you on stage, they saw that. So, yeah, but I, yes, but again, I felt that that, but as from their perspective, they was more looking at it as reaction. Same thing that you done. Yeah. Look, so you look, you how you move, how you're yeah. sounding. Like it's not really about the song. You see what I'm yeah, saying? So I thought I thought with the image. Then the image yeah. sell it first. Yeah, but now when, it's, they, when they saw you, you were whining to reggae, so them should yeah. I know. Well, <laughs> But you see, but I, I, it, it, you know what's so funny? Because if I had waited maybe t- about three more years, yeah, that's when you had your Rihanna, Drake, and everybody start the start the more and the reggae yeah. thing. That, yeah. that, it, it, when I was telling them to do that, they all said I was crazy. Yeah, because I was already not, not to say that I met. I'm not, I'm not saying that I met the Drake and Rihanna song, but that was my vibe. That's where I'm I'm here. And they're yeah. like, nah. It's like, it was years later when it come and pick up. But anyway, so we'll go back to the thing now. So 2011 now. So um I said, all right, come. We have to just do, we have to do the thing what they need. So we turn on the radio, we listen to Wagwan. All right, all right, cool. Them beat there. All right, McCandy with them beat there. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. All right, all right. All right, I can do it, I can do it. You understand? So me and these producers from Sydney, we sit down and we made uh, the only club song. And I, when, when, once we made it, we already knew, we already know th- that they're going to love it. Because I know what you lot want now. I've, I've sat here for a whole year, we know what you want now. I understand. You understand? <laughs> so... So everybody pipe up now. See the tune there. Yeah, because and and uh, so, and mind you, now nah, this is the um, this is the first song where I've listened to them and I've taken every instruction. You understand? This is the process. This is what you need for the know. So, so we done that, and then yeah, the song just went crazy. I went. I imagine this. I went. I done the song, and. As I said, I've been there a year, and not that you give in, but you just say, "Yo, my God, I'm going back to my yard," you know. So I went back to New York mm-hmm. when the song come out. So the song come out now. I'm there. I'm in New York now, and I just start getting looking on my Facebook. I start getting these messages. My phone just start going crazy, and yeah, in the space of four weeks, this tune just fly off the charts. Ridiculous. Um, yeah, we was ah, uh, oh. it went, it went, it went four, three times platinum in Australia. So the wow. whole country was going mad. They all start, they them start make line dancing video and Ray Ray and yeah. So but so then now when the, as I said I'm in New York now they're just like yo you have to come back, <laughs> you have to come back no you have to come fly no 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 no. I had to do all the te- I had to do all the television and the radio and uh, go around the country and tour the song. I tried, I tried that song. I worked that song for about a year. 
Wow. Work, wow. work, work, work. It went adverts, this, that, TV, everything. Well, and I think finally gave them what they wanted. Finally. I, I, <laughs> you understand? So it's like, um, so yeah, we, we done that. And um, yeah, it, it, it was good. It was, a, as I said, a great experience. And um, we eat some good food. And I toured well, the whole good. of New Zealand, Australia. And everyone was proud of me. Because at first, I, I used to think that at first, everyone, because your friend then would say, yo, I'm going to like them meals that they you know, my, yo, I'm going to like them chone and no, rare, rare, rare. And, reggae. And the, yeah, the, yo, them song there, rare. And your friends are like, no, nah, no. Nah. And it's like, it's your real, your true, true friend them will say to you, yo, I'm proud of you. Well done. Good for yeah. you. I'm happy for you. But then yeah. some of your other friend them say, boy, I'm not really that, that thing there. You know? And you're just like, ah, oh, like, but, but at the same time, they don't understand you're stepping in your life because you have to make steps. Because remember, I've been in, I've been working with my father my, 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 most most of my career. Yeah. So it's like now I'm on my own. I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm you understand? So, so, so your friends will respect it and understand. You know what I mean? And um, so that just opened up doors, doors, doors. I, that's when I got the publishing deal to do the writing, um, tours again, more time Japan on my own now, New Zealand on my own, Australia on my own, and just and just doing that. And then um where where did Take Me Away come in after that track? Yeah, Take Me Away come right after that now. So as soon as that that started to die down, so so you're just talking maybe the song was up top for maybe six months. So then yeah, it's about six, seven, about seven months after I done Take Me Away with a, a next artist called Winter Gordon. Okay. Um, yeah, she's from um she's from America. The reason why I done the song with her now is because she had um she had a number one before me. She had a number okay. one and it's our next black girl too. So two black people in Australia, they like and you're number one and two, whatever, you know what I mean? So <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So it's like you said so, it. <laughs> but that's how it is. It's like, look, it looked that way, yeah. So I linked her and we done, yeah, we done take me. Why are you in Australia? When you I understand? Australia, I was like, what's he doing up there? Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, so I'm back in, so I'm going back and forward, New York, Australia, New York, Australia, because I live yeah. in New York, but I'm working in Australia. So I met her in New York and we vibe and we just had a good vibe and we done yeah. the song. Um, we done the video in, in Brooklyn as well. Um, I get to put on my, my Sultan tie and thing, you know what I mean? James Bond style, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so it's good. That, those songs were a part of the EP you were working on? Yeah, that was part of it. Well, at, the, at the time, though, you, that was, there wasn't no EP at the time. No. Because remember, I told you, I'd only signed for a couple singles. Oh. You understand? Did the EP come out through them? Yeah, it come out through them, but it, it happened after the singles. So after okay. you done the single, after I done Take Me Away, and Take Me Away went gold now. So we're still yeah. selling the units. So after that now, they say, all right, we give you an album or EP, whatever you want to call it. Give you some more money. Ray, 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 ray. So the business is working, isn't it? So yeah. we done the Take Me Away now. Take Me Away went gold here and New Zealand again. So we do the same thing again. You're traveling, you do the work, work, yeah. work, work, work. Working the song, you know, yeah. and then uh, after we done that, now we done another song, um, with Fat Man Scoop. Okay. Yes. Um. So, but he couldn't. I was in Australia at the time, and he was in America. So we did the song now, and again, mind you, remember I'm working with the label now. So we just I do this chop the song them that they like the vibe of, right? Yeah. I was gonna say oh. I couldn't squeeze in one reggae in that EP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No. On the EP, there's reggae on the EP. Because oh, I, I can't, okay. yeah, the reggae they're on the EP. There's reggae okay. on there. Um, I've got a song with my dad on there as well, and oh, um, nice. yeah, and uh, um, I covered, I remixed the uh, Buju. I wanna be loved, not for who you think. I, I read that now. Yes, that's on there. But I got no, that on there. I'm, I'm only saying that you got the fight in the beginning with them fight you on the reggae. You do one dance, yeah. and you go right back to the reggae. What you were trying yeah, to yeah, but that, but you don't hear what I said. I squeeze that into <laughs> the EP, Miss Squeeze it. <laughs> 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 
You have to give me one. Give yeah, one. You, have to, you have to put in the original. You have to give me one. one. Yes. You understand? So, um, so yeah, so that so then, same process again. Fat Man Scoop. Then we've done the EP now. So EP done. Boom, bang. Let's go. Um, every, everything's done. That I've, I've, I've done all of that I've been asked to do. Right? Yeah. Okay. So guess what happened now? Now it's time for my turn. Mwando and me, Wando know. You understand? So you're talking 2014, 15, you know? So we're in, in the thing for about four or five years. And then I want to put out my thing. I feel like, because I feel the label is now cheating the fans. Yeah. Because I feel you're giving them the same product over and over. They're not really seeing no development of the artists because the same food I'm giving them and they, and the label's looking at numbers and what's in the chart. So they're like, no, nah, we have to make that. This song's number one. We have to have something similar to this. And I'm like, I understand, but you have to find someone else to yeah. do that process because I need to move as an artist. I need to develop my thing into a different levels now. You understand? Yeah. So it's like, um, same process again. I'm sending in songs. No, 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 no. Because now, as I said to you, I felt I've given you what you wanted. Now let me be, not to say that I wasn't comfortable in doing what I was doing because me, I wrote all them songs. All them songs is me and people write or it's just me. So it's coming from me. So that side, I'm not, I can't say it's not me writing the songs. Um, but it, it didn't come to the point where I need to make sure I say, more, I want my mum my to play in her car. More, you understand? I want, to, I, 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 want, I want my community and my people them to understand me, you know, because at this present time, even though they see me in the business growing, they haven't yeah. heard no sound for them. So it's like I'm, in, I'm developed now, I'm seasoned. Remember, I've been in it from 2006. So yeah. that's going up to 2014, 15. That's yeah. time. I mean, they ain't yeah. had a thing though. And I still haven't get as miss and I still haven't given them what, what I feel that I should give to my people them as well. You know what I mean? So yeah. so then me and the label, you start pull apart because you're not really, you know, I work with the program. You, you, you understand? And and I can understand from their perspective because it's like we are put yeah. give your money, we are give your food, we are rare, rare, yeah. you mess up the business. You're not really yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah, so 2016, we just parted ways. I went, I, I went back my business. They went back their business. I, I only stayed with the publishers to do the songwriting. Yeah, so you're um, when? It's 2016, 16. Okay. Yeah. And that's when you started to do who you, you wanted to do as a solo artist and on your yes. own. Yes. Yes. Which, so which, we, huh? Doesn't it feel so good? <laughs> it feels good, but what? I will tell you this. There is a but because you miss the machine. The machine. It sounds, yeah. it sounds like the machine, the machine. It's like when the machine is behind your thing, it yeah. just pushes things in a different different way. Because yeah. your little, my leverage that I can get on my own you know, might be 30,000 people. Let's say with Facebook, Instagram, and rare, 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 all yeah. of that, right? Yeah. They will take that and times it by a million because oh, they yeah. put it everywhere. Yeah, it, it goes everywhere, everywhere, in an, every corner of the earth. Because I, I get royalty checks from places like Russia where you yeah. wouldn't even think so you're a Sangha player. Yeah. You understand? So yeah. when the machine is in the, the process, it yeah. send it in every corner of the world. Yeah. That's the only thing that I would say I'm missing right at this moment in time. Yeah. So th that's the only thing. But I am enjoying being um, independent and doing what I want. Yes. You understand? That is the best yeah. thing. Yeah, that's, that's what the I best feeling. Yeah. Musically now, you know. Oh yes, yes, a hundred percent. But but then, as I said to you, it, it comes with an up and down because when you're yeah. in, because then even though you're independently, you're doing it all yourself. You have to do it all yourself financially too. Yeah, you exactly. see what I'm saying. So exactly. everything is on you. Whereas when yeah. you got the machine, the machine 
pay for everything right now. So all, everything I'm doing now is, is coming out of my pocket. Not that I don't mind because it's my money and I'm going to get it back up however, however I do it. But I'm just saying it's a, it's a little different. It's a little bit different. Yeah. I want to talk. We probably have five minutes left. Wow, the time wow. here. I'm saying we know the conversation. Yeah, they're, they're telling me to take my time. I tell yeah. you, I just speak. Well, let me get time. to the last bit. Let me get to the last bit now. So where we are today now. So obviously, no, no, we got to get into that. But before you get into that, let right. everybody know to find you on social media. Marvin Priest everywhere. So Marvin Priest Instagram, Marvin Priest Music on Facebook, Marvin Priest on Twitter, Marvin Priest YouTube, Marvin Priest Google, Wikipedia, everything. Marvin Priest. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, not difficult. <laughs> it, I'm going to say go check out all the videos on his yeah, YouTube channel. Got, yeah, we've got enough of them. You're on his father's YouTube channel, Max. Yes. Green YouTube channel. And um require is out right now go check yeah, requires out. out right now i tried is out right now Ooh, no, the, I, hold on, vibes. I, hold on, hold on. I try is the my tune i said if i that see that's the marvin priest i like that is that guy. all right we're gonna that's what that's the one i like that's the one i like uh, come on man that's the one i like but uh, um but this is why this is why it's good right now because right now i've got my band crown heights music um yes. six-piece band um, and they rec- we got a whole album coming out in the, uh, well, uh, well, because of this pandemic it stopped everything yeah. but end of this year we've got enough music coming out live as well the album is live you understand yeah. and no joke you know, you're talking about uh, independently you got to do it yourself talk yes. about your record label too as well yes I've got a label called Rabbit Records um, right now me and my Bridget and Ricky um, that's my partner we go 50-50 on there so we've got a couple acts signed today Crown Heights Music I'm signed to me myself Ricky signed there um, we've got a guy called Joe Wise that's signed to us as well um, so we've got uh, as again a whole band a whole, a whole oh, I'm, I, I, I'm so happy with it because as I said it's my dream to have that to have my band playing the music that I want do you get what I mean no one else can't come in it can't tell me said no all you can do is say I like it or I don't like it, and I'm fine with that. But you can't. Yeah. You, you understand? It's even yeah. for me. I'm telling you, like that's why I'm saying I, why I talk about this, and I'm glad you got into the record label and the whole story of that because a lot of people, we all know, record labels sign you. The money is there to back you to get you on a certain level. But the conversation and why I thought it was important that you talked about that is because they were trying to change you to who you're not as an artist. Yes, and a lot of right. people. I've heard a lot of people leave because of that too. Oh, it, ha- it happens. Hard. It does happen. Or oh, yeah, of course, of course, it happens. It happens all the time. But as I said, because of today, today is now a time where you can do you. They will come and find you. You just got to be patient because people are yeah. also in a rush. They don't have yeah. the patience to understand. Everything takes time. It's a process. You got to learn the trade. Learn the business, learn how to do it, learn what's good for you. Then you build your catalog, then you can start. They will come to find you once you, once you're ready, the, the right thing will come find you. That's how, that's what I believe. Yeah. And I really feel like the connections you've made over the year, being alongside your father, everybody has embraced you. So it's not mm. like, it's not like, yes, the machine is gone, but the machine is there because of the, the, the relationships you made along the way, touring with your dad, people are embracing you. So, oh yeah, of course. Well, I, as I said, right now is the the process of me just get giving back what I feel. Like as you said, like the songs that I tried, I feel every pe- my people them deserve back them tune there. You understand? Yes. So that's what we're doing right now. Yes. I yes. try, can you sing a line or two for me, just for me. Remember the last time we were lovers. Remember the last time playing games. I ain't seen no more, man. I ain't seen no more. <laughs> you go check out the video. I'm telling you, and the video is so cute. I just love it. I just love it. It required to again. You got to check that out. Yes, Marvin, man. I'm telling you, man. It's so good to see you. It's been so long. And I yes. wish you all the success. You deserve every bit of it because you have the whole package from life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you same know? to you, say to you, man. You take care and stay blessed and stay positive and make sure your family, keep your family safe. You know what I'm saying? Crazy times. Uh, trust me. Again, mm. follow him on Instagram, Marvin Priest. 
This show can also be heard on the Barn Burner Radio Network on its 122 platforms. Please check out barnburner.ca for all the news. Barn Burner, watch it, hear it, read it, download it, and love it. It's the Tanya Mulling Show right here. Catch the same time, same place next week. Have a blessed evening, all. Take care. Bless.